Hey everybody, today we're auto previews a prototype of the Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Valeria, or more importantly, the Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, where we are going to be fighting to reclaim our lost homeland. And what does that mean? Normally I don't do this, but I really, really like the setting of this game, so I'm going to give you a little bit of the story of the Shadow Kingdoms. For years, the humans, elves, and dwarves have been slowly encroaching on our territory and slaying our kind in the name of progress. They've built their citadels, keeps, and villages over our homes and sacred spaces as they push us further into the darkness. Now is the time to rally our troops and lay waste to our oppressors and bring forth the reign of the Shadow Kingdoms. Woohoo! Yes, we are what are traditionally called the bad guys in most fantasy games. However, this proves that no! We are creatures with sentience and dignity, and um, we want to hold on to what has, what is ours, what has been stolen from us, and that is what we are going to do. We are going to be trying to push the humans, elves, and dwarves out of our homelands by building up powerful armies of dice and champions to lead them to go on daring um, war plans or battle plans. And I've got this game set up. I'm going to be doing a solo run-through today, although it's going to work out very, very similar to a two-player game. Although, if you'd like to see a two-player game, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen and go check out the awesome run-through from Slicker Drips, who does a great job um, doing run-throughs, and I really enjoyed his two-player. Today, we're flying solo, which means it is me, the Noel player, you know, these uh, warrior dog types, up against the adversary, which is a simple little automated character that really kind of functions as a timer that I'm racing against. So, I am set up. There are a bunch of troops to recruit, champions to recruit. There are three specific objectives that have come out randomly. In this game, uh, there are seven points to be had for being the first to do three I think this is an assault type mission, if I recall correctly. There's assault, sieges, and ambushes, I think, or something like that. Um, eight points to be had if you are the first to reclaim your homeland in this plus-shaped account. And nine points to be had if you are the first to complete six battle plans. Uh, and it's interesting, seven battle plans triggers the end of the game. So we are even more than normal racing to finish battles as quick as we can because of this. If this weren't out and instead it were this, you know, this could be another way we'd want to uh, reclaim our territory. Or it could have been, of course I can't find one that uh, shows a different thing. Uh, you know, to be the first to have five dice on have five troops that we haven't sent to battle. So there's lots of different combinations of objectives from game to game. These are the three we are chasing after. Oops, and I forgot to reset. I start with zero points. The adversary starts with ten. Gets the big leg up on me. Okay, so we are ready to go. I am the first player. How does it work? Well, this is basically kind of a worker placement game where I have one worker. This is my little, um, the Knoll Marshal, the leader of the Knoll forces. And folks, it's not going to be a cute little werewolf meeple in the shipping game. Everything you are seeing here today is prototype. If you want to see what the real pieces are going to look like, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen to go check out the Kickstarter page. I should say, on the topic of prototypes, this is a bright, vibrant, colorful game with art by the Miko. And you can certainly see the vibrancy here on the main board, but these sleeves are giving me a lot of glare. I tried to get rid of it. I couldn't quite get rid of it. But don't worry, the art on these cards is awesome as well. Wouldn't you want to have a juggernaut champion in your army. Look at that thing. Oh yeah. I might recruit that juggernaut. Who knows? So anyway, on your turn, you're going to take your little meeple and put it in one of the six available spaces. Now, you can't go stay where you were. So I'm in my home camp. I can't stay here. I have to go to one of these five shrines. The gem, the magic, the champion shrine, the gold shrine, and the uh, tactics shrine, I think it is. And I'll do two things. Wherever I go, I will claim one of the dice that's there. And this represents me marshalling troops to uh, fight in any of these battles. Plus, I'll get to do whatever the action of this space is. And where am I going to go? I like champions. I want to recruit a champion. I'm going to come over here, and that means 
I, first of all, am going to claim either this level 3 goblin troop die or this level 1 undead. You can see uh, the game is very colorblind friendly because even if you can't tell the difference between red and green, they have a little goblin versus a little orc symbol on them. So anyway, I could recruit either of these two dice. And these are multi-use dice. The big number tells me how much strength they'll have when I eventually send them into battle to fight back the humans and the dwarves and all of that. So that's really important. The bigger the number, the more potential points I could score. So in that regard, this one is implicitly better than this. However, this is only a useful die, because it's a goblin, if I plan on launching a war uh, plan that requires goblins, like, like this one. Bushwhacking the uh, Zafar's Oasis needs two orcs and a goblin, and that's an ambush. Um, but, you know what? Of all of these particular missions that are available, I think I want to go after striking the Colosseum. It needs two undead and a gargoyle. You can see, literally, in the picture. But, this is a, uh, again, I forget what it's called, an attack of... Uh, what are they? Oh, it's driving me nuts. Clash! It's a clash. This is a clash type of war plan, and remember, there are points to be had for being the first player to do three clashes. This is the, uh, the we've got ambush, ambush, clash, ambush, it's all ambushes all the time. I want to complete this one. That means I need two undead and a gargoyle. I've just come over here, I'm going to recruit this undead, even though he is a wussy little die. He's only going to provide one strength in the coming battle when we try to strike the Colosseum. But that's okay. Um, because there's other good use I can put him to as well. I'll use him in the coming battle, but right now, each die has a number in the bottom left corner. That is the discount they will give me on the action I can do in the place where I recruited them. And the action in this area is recruit a champion. So this is going to give me, it's very weak in the fight, but very strong in discounts. Any of these champions that have an instant effect, they do one thing and then they're done. They never do anything else. They, by default, cost one buck. These ones that give me an ongoing ability cost three bucks. These ones that give me points at the end of the game cost six bucks. And I'm sitting on a five buck discount. So I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to waste it on these. I don't get any change back, so I should really use it to get the Sea or the War Beast. Or our friend, the Juggernaut, which is worth three bonus points at the end of the game for each of the big objectives that I do. The War Beast is worth two points for every champion I recruit that has a reusable. So if I get the War Beast, I'm probably going to want to spend the rest of my game recruiting from this row, the mid-cost ones. And the Seer gives me two points for every champion, period. Wow. Okay. So, well then, that Seer, who would be for every champion, is certainly better than the War Beast. Oh wait, derp, derp, derp. No, that's not for everyone. That's for every high level. So, this would give me two points for every mid-level champion, two points for every high-level champion. High-level champions are expensive. I think I will go, oh, do I want that Juggernaut? That's six potential points if I can complete all three of these sub-objectives. Mm, but will I pull them all off? Yeah, I mean, I said I love that Juggernaut. How could I say no to that big, lovable worm? Uh, he's going to join our forces. This is my first recruit. And because I used this die with a $5 discount, I go on ahead and I put this over here. You can see I can hold currently up to three dice in my own little area. I have recruited him, and he gets added to my army in this slot. Now this is a reminder right here that by default at the beginning of the game, I can only have three champions on the go. But later on I might upgrade so that I can have six or even ten champions on the go. So this is an in-game thing. I even more than before want to complete all these objectives because it's three bonus points to me for every one. And remember, with my five dollar discount, this six dollar guy cost me one gold. Okay. I am done. And now, if I was playing with other players, they would take their little worker, and they could go anywhere. They could even go where I am. You don't block other players in this game. It's a little bit different with the solo. The solo player, the adversary, blocks me. I cannot move to wherever they are. But under normal circumstances, the players, players don't block each other. So, another player might come here and recruit... Oh, and by the way, who's the new champion that shows up? It's the strategist. Four points for every battle plan. Ooh... 
But if you look closely, that little dotted line means every battle plan that I've claimed but not actually finished yet. Hmm, I might want to recruit. Well, I mean, they're all good. It's just a question of uh, how much money do I have to recruit. Anyway, though, so my turn was I came here, I took a die, and I was able to use this discount to then hire somebody for less than I would normally go. The adversary, they are super simple. Like I said, they're pretty much nothing more than a timer. On their turn, all they do is move to the next space clockwise. They don't do anything. They don't take a die. They don't trigger the action. Now, one thing that does happen, if they move into a space where I am, they immediately score two victory points. Again, this does not happen in a multiplayer game because players can live and let live because we're all kind of on the same side. We're uh, down on um, humans and elves and dwarves, up on shadow. Hooray. But the adversary, he's a bit of a jerk and if he moves in he gets some points and he prevents me from moving where he is but right now all he's going to do is move here and he's done my turn again let's keep going i cannot stay here i cannot go there so what am i going to do next well i have recruited the first undead remember to complete this strike the coliseum i need two more i need two undead and a gargoyle and you can see there's an undead and a gargoyle there there's an undead over here there's a gargoyle over here um, I, 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 think I will come up here to the gem shrine. Where, whoops, sorry, left over from an aborted attempt to uh, do a run through. I didn't get very far and I messed up, so I started over. So, forgot to reset this. Um, there, in a solo game, there are three gems available. With more players, there are more. There's a little chart of it right here on the board. But anyway. So I'm going to come over here. I'm either going to claim this undead, which is much more powerful, has a total strength of five, but only gives me a $1 discount. But that's okay, because discounts don't do any good on these top shrines. Discounts are only useful on the bottom shrines. So I'm just going to get him for his raw strength when we eventually strike the Colosseum. That's five plus one. I've got six total strength in my little army. And because I'm here, I get to claim one crystal. And you can see, if I do this upgrade, I can actually hold three crystals or gems. And they are very powerful. They let me manipulate my dice. When I'm going to go and attack, I could take a die and flip it. And suddenly, I could become much more powerful in the coming battle that I am preparing for. Alrighty. So, or also, a die I can spend a, one of these gems to turn it into any color. So I could use this orc as an undead if I needed to, or what have you. Hmm. All right, but anyway, so I came over here. I'm done. I just grabbed a die. I did the action of the space. It is now the adversary. They're just going to move on ahead, thereby blocking me from coming. I would like to come back and get a champion, because uh, I've still got plenty of money, but I can't. He's blocking. And again, no blocking in a multiplayer game. Any number of players can go to a given space. There's no tightening of the board that way. Back to me. Okay, I need a gargoyle, and once I've got a gargoyle, I can strike the Colosseum. There's a gargoyle here and a gargoyle here. If I come over here, I could get this level 4 gargoyle with a $2 discount. The strength and the discount pretty much always um, you know, even out. Uh, you know, the, the two numbers, if it's a 4, it's a 2. If it's a 5, it's a 1. If it's a 3, it's a 3, etc. So, I could get this, and that means... My total strength is 9 plus 1 is 10. I'd have a, ra a raiding party of 10 for the mission I'm planning on doing. Hmm. Or, or, no, I'm not going to come here. I, I, I could get, if I come here, though, I could either increase the amount of magic I have by 2. Magic can be used to change the value of my dice, to increase them when I go to war. Magic can also be used to change the champions or the battle plans that are available. If there's not one out that you would like to do, or there's one out that your opponent really wants to do, you can spend some magic and make those disappear and draw replacements. But I'm not doing that. I'm not coming over here to get magic. I'm going to come over here to the Tactics Shrine. I am going to get this... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, gargoyle. Uh, which isn't very strong, but gives me a big discount. Four dollars off. And uh, that's going to be nice, because as you can see, what I do if I come over here is I can reserve any one of these I want. Because there could be a case when you're playing against other human players where they are trying to beat you to the punch. You know, right now, 
If I were playing some human players, chances are somebody else would have already reserved this because we could all see how valuable clash-based uh, missions are. Somebody would have snagged this because everybody would want to be the first to get that and score seven as opposed to five, as opposed to less and less. So, um, but to reserve costs three gold. However, I have a $4 discount, so I could reserve this right now for free. Here's the deal, though. I'm not playing against a human player. I'm playing against the AI. And the AI, whenever they complete a mission, which is going to happen in two more turns, first he'll move here and then he'll move here, the only thing he ever does is once he does a full circuit to all the shrines, he takes out whatever is at the top. And the more dice it needs, he never collects dice or anything. It's just assumed once he's made his way all the way around, he can, he can do whatever is up here. He will score more points the uh, more elaborate it is. So I don't want him to take that one. I would like him to do a, a smaller one. So the nice thing is, me coming over here, if I, if I claim this, these are going to slide down and a new one will come out. And so I could claim this one, but I'm already planning on doing that one. Do I want to claim something else? I mean, I have a $4 discount, so maybe I should claim this one. Um, this one has a lot more flexibility. It wants a little bit of everything. Goblins and... Uh, and it doesn't want any undead, though. Eh... Uh, yeah, you know what? Let the heck. Let's go on ahead. Since I know the AI is not going to take that. There's no other human players taking that. I'll reserve this one. And again, because of my $4 discount, it's free. And this is uh, why. There's two reasons why you would choose to reserve waylaying uh, the Bogatier. One of them is to keep another player from grabbing it. In case you, know, you knew there was a lot of attention for it. And then the other one is up here on my player board. I have three slots, although two of them are locked, that I can reserve a battle plan. I'm going to reserve this battle plan here, which didn't cost me anything because of my huge discount. When I reserve something into this slot, if I pay one dollar, I can increase my influence by one. And that is a huge deal. Money and magic, they come and go. You, you earn it, you spend it. The, as your influence increases, it never drops. So it is definitely worth increasing it every chance you get. Although you can see, I can only earn so much money, magic, and influence because then I hit this wall. This is another upgrade I can do to get rid of this wall so I could earn even more influence. But right now, I started at 10. I've just moved up to 11 influence. And you'll see why that is a very good thing when I eventually go to war uh, against the invaders. Okay. So, uh, uh, it cost, I basically converted one gold into one influence, which is excellent because I stored this. And now, on a future turn, when I decide to go and launch a battle, I could launch this one, and I'm the only one who can do it, or I could launch any of these. And meanwhile, this slides down, and let me see a, a level 2Z. A level 2Z! Nope, it's another level 3, so that means he's still probably going to score more points. I was really hoping I would take a good one away from him. But say lobby. Alright, so that was my turn. I came over here. I recruited another die. And you can see, I don't have any room. I I can still recruit more dice, but I'd have to jettison one of my existing ones. Or jettison whatever I recruited and keep my existing ones. As you guessed it, I can upgrade and store more dice if I want to. So I can't stay here. i got to go someplace else. And one of those places I could go is right back to my own camp. If I ever go back to my camp, that means I am going to spend some or all of my troops I have drafted and go to battle somewhere out here in the world up against something I've reserved or one of the existing ones. I'm not going to do that quite yet, though. Or am I? I think I am ready to go. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys want to see a battle? I'll show you a battle. Let's come over here. I'm returning to my camp. And I cannot do this, even though I've reserved it, because I need a, go a goblin, a gargoyle, and an orc. I have a gargoyle, but no goblins and orcs. So that's not possible. Remember, I do have this gem, so I could convert one of these to be any color I want. So I could say this undead is really a goblin, but then I'd still need an orc. I'd need two gems, which I can't actually even hold. So I can't do this even if I wanted to, but that's okay. This was the one I wanted to do. Um, it costs three bucks. One, two, three. And because I didn't reserve it, I don't get any kind of bonus like I did when I reserved this. But now, let's strike the Colosseum with my amassed troops, um, which have a total strength of five, six, seven, eight. That's not bad, but it's not great. Because up here on our little player boards, we've got a reminder. Let me show you one close up. 
The amount of damage we do when we attack determines how many points. If I only do 8 points of damage, I will score 3 points. But if I do 11 points of damage, I will score 6 points. I would rather do 6 points than 3 points of glory. Um, because while we're all in this together, all the, this is a competitive game, but we all want the, the humans out. But whoever does the best job will become the new leader of the Shadow Kingdom. So we're competing too. And um, don't get me wrong, there's no semi-co-op in here. This is a straight up race competitive game. So this isn't good enough. I am going to spend this gem, back to the mines you go, to flip this one into a six. If I can do it. And now I'm at 13 total. And you might say, oh, well, 13, oh, tough luck. If I'd gotten to 14, I could have actually made it up to, 10, to, to 9 points. But actually, that's not true. Even if, even if, let's say, this 2 was a 4, so that I've actually um, got 15 points, there is a limit to how much damage my troops can do. It doesn't matter how strong they are. My influence is the limiter. So even if I could do this much damage, because my influence is at 11, the excess gets wasted. I'm not a good enough leader to push them to the limit and do 15 points of damage, which, remember, would have gotten me 9 points. But that's okay, because I've got 13, I think that's what it was, which means I'm scoring 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm catching up to the adversary who had that boost. So these troops, they are... I don't know if... Let's just say they retire. Then back into the bag they go. Congratulations, guys. And I've scored some points. A uh, new war is going to come out. This is my last chance. Hopefully a level 2 so he doesn't score as many points. No, it's a level 4! He's going to score even more points. No! No. Okay. And, okay, this... I take and I put it over here. We keep track of how many champions we've got because we have a finite number. We keep track of how many battles we've done because as soon as somebody does their seventh battle, it's game over or you finish that round. And don't forget, in this game, as soon as somebody does their sixth battle, uh, they get the big points off of this one. Okay, so um, that was that, except not quite. There is one more benefit to, to freeing our homeland. We get to do an upgrade. I've talked about upgrades. Let's actually do an upgrade. I can pick any of these so that I can hold more dice, so that I could hold more champions, so that I could hold more gems, so that I could automatically do plus one extra damage in every fight. Or I could get rid of that limiter so I could work up to higher levels of influence, money, and magic. Or, in the same way this is reserved and gave me a power, if I unlock this, I could reserve stuff over here and get a power. Spend uh, money to recruit champions um, without having to waste the time of going there. Or, spend money to get dice without having to waste the time to go get there. Much better to spend money if you've got it. Okay, so um, I get one of those upgrades. What do I want? What do I want? Oh, and also, everybody has this upgrade, which means the die that is your color. I'm Knowles, so any um, uh, Knoll dice are basically considered wild. So that could come in very handy, although, as it happens, there are no Knoll dice in play, so I don't think I want that power right now. <sighs> Having more dice to store is really nice, but champions... Champions are the bee's knees. Uh, yeah. I want more champions. So I'm going to upgrade myself. Because I already wasted one of my three slots. This guy's never going to do anything for me until the end of the game. Now I can have five more champions because I've done this. I'm still not done though, folks. This upgrade has made me stronger over here. And I'm now going to place it somewhere on this board. And that's going to indicate where was the Colosseum? Where did we just have that battle? I can put it in any of these slots, but there are bonuses to be had. Remember, I did a clash a battle. So, because I did a clash battle, if I put my upgrade token here, I get two extra points. Whereas if I put it over here, I'd get nothing because I didn't do a siege battle. I'd get nothing if I put it over here because there were no goblins in the fight. I'm going to put it up there and get 
two more points. Boom, boom, I've almost caught up with Mr. Bad. Nice, itty, nice, nice. Now, there's more to this than that, because later on, if I um, do another battle, or I get an upgrade that allows me to fill this space in, not only will I get points for you know, everybody in the battle, but I will also increase my influence by two, because I'll get the chain that connects them. And if that wasn't enough, remember we have those secret goals? One of them was to conquer stuff in a cross sign. And as you can see, oops, sorry, I've started working on that. I want to fill this, 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 and this space in so that I can trigger that bonus as well. There is a lot going on and a lot to consider, and that worked out very, very nicely. But now it's the adversary's turn. And I think, folks, always watch with the Klingon subtitles. I think I, I forgot to move him once, didn't I? Let's see, the first, well, I was first. And the first thing I did was I, I got a champion, and then he moved there, and then I got, uh, I, I reserved something, and then he moved there, and then I got a gem, and then he moved there. So yeah, it's his turn. He's going to move here. And remember, when he makes it all the way around, he takes whatever the top dog is, which is this one. It had four. Urgh. Urgh. He scores 50. 15 points. This is the worst thing. If this had only required two dice, if this had been a really weak, easy one, he would have scored nine points. If he had three dice, he would have scored 12. But he scored 15. All right, so um, boom. I thought I was catching up with him, but I've still got some work to do. All right, so that's that. And now he's blocking this space, and it's my turn again. And I am almost broke. I have one buck. But I would like to recruit some more stuff, especially since I got more. So let's come back on over here. Let's grab this die. It's a goblin, which gives me a $3 discount. So I'm probably going to recruit one of these guys for free. And I've got a level 3 goblin, which means now I'm going to start... Oh, by the way, a new battle came out. Another level 4. I... My gosh, these are all ambushes! Where's the clash? Now this is an interesting thing. If I don't like what's out here... I could spend magic anytime I want. I've got three magic. I could spend three magic to wipe three of these out and make three more come out um, so that I could hopefully uh, get uh, what I want. I could have also used this to kill that level four so that hopefully he wouldn't have gotten 15. But hey, another four came out, but I could have killed that one too. Because you can spend as much magic as you want in a given turn. Drat, drat, drat. Well, we'll worry about that in a second because I'm over here. I've got a $3 discount, which means any of these, the Scout, the Oracle, or the Engineer, are free, free, free. So this says, whenever I do a Siege attack, I get plus two points. Mm. And both of these are give me rewards when I reserve battles, like you saw me do. Although, I'm not a particularly strong battle reserver, because I've only got one space to do it. I haven't unlocked these. Maybe I should have actually, before I chose this, maybe I should have uh, chosen one of these so I could be reserving and using those powers right away. There's a lot to consider. Darn it. Now again, if I'm not interested in these, I could spend some magic, kill one of them, bring a new one out, and maybe get something I like a little bit more. Huh. What the heck? Let's do it. Let's spend one magic. And let's say... You know, these are still potentially useful to me. Let's get rid of the sieger. I mean, I do plan on having at least one siege so I can fill this space in, but that's only two points to me. It's never going to do anything. Let's just kill that one and bring out a soul reaver. Ooh. So what this one is, it's every time I earn one of those chain bonuses. Remember those? Uh, when I complete this and this, I get this chain bonus. I would also make one extra magic every time. So I just spent a magic to make this Soul Reaver come into play. I do plan on filling all these spaces. That's one, two, three, four. So this guy's going to generate four magic for me over the course of the game. I'll take him. All right, this is my second of six champions that I've got on hand. And that's a power I've got for the rest of the game. And what's interesting, nobody else can come here now. The adversary still does because all he is is a timer. But now that there's no dice, nobody else can recruit until we get so low on dice. In a two-player game, it's when there's only four dice left. In the solo game, it's when there's only three dice left. The remaining dice, the, all the champions get wiped, we reset, and we continue. All right, so that was that. I, I'm pretty happy with that. Although, man, I want this soldier because I plan on doing at least two more clashes when they eventually appear, and every clash is worth two points. Mm, I might want to get him later. Although, here's a problem. I have now hired my first 
in-game guy and my first mid-game guy. I haven't hired any instants yet. And if you look a little bit more closely, you'll notice it says these cost six plus. That plus is referring to the fact that the first time I recruit them, it costs six. The second time, it costs seven. And then eight, and then nine, because I have to pay six plus an additional dollar or gold for every one of these I've already recruited. So if I really focus on just one type of hire, they get progressively more and more expensive. So again, the game encourages you to branch out wherever possible. All right, so that was it for me. Uh, the adversary continues with his rounds, and it is my turn again. All right, so if I want to do this to you know get the extra magic and get the extra influence, and I want to get points for killing goblins, this is a point for every goblin I kill. This one has one goblin, so I wouldn't get that much. But you know what? This one has one goblin. There's none of none of these particular battle plans require a bunch of goblins. So I d and and they're all ambushes. That's crazy. I don't want to do an ambush. That's way down here in the corner where I get points for it. I mean, again, I don't have to. If I if I complete an ambush, I could still say, hey, I you know I, I'm not going to put it down here to get extra points. I'm going to do this because I want to unlock the chain. It's just I missed the opportunity. I might want to spend some magic. Well, hey, I don't want him to get a plus four either. So I definitely need to kill. But I mean, what else do I need? I've got a goblin. I need an orc. And I need a uh, uh, gargoyle. If I launch in this place, I get a point for every orc. If I do in this place, it's a point for every gar gargoyle. So I should be doing this double orc. Or that. Oh, this would be perfect. Well, no. All right. So anyway, i got to go somewhere. Because I can't stay here. Uh, says the uh, owners of the Champion Shrine. So where am I going to go? I am broke. I am down to one gold. Even if I could come back here, which I can't, I wouldn't have much money to spend. Maybe I should come to the Gold Shrine, where I get gold equal to the opposite of the discount value. If you come over here and grab a die, or you come over here and grab a die, the discount gives you a discount on whatever it is you're buying. And that could be a real lifesaver. If you come over here, the discount is the opposite. Instead of getting... You make that much money. And here's a problem. There are two level 5 orcs. That's great. They're going to help in a fight. Their discount is only one. So am I going to spend an entire turn just to come over here to get one measly gold? Yes, I am. All right, so I'm going to take this because I, because I, I need an orc and a gargoyle. So I'm going to do that. And I get... One gold. Not happy about that. Okay, so that was it. He continues to move on. And, um, right. Uh, now, I could come back here. I've got some more gold. Oh no, again, I can't. I can't. I cannot do it. I need a gargoyle. Here's the only gargoyle! Ah, I need that gargoyle! But I don't, because I could come over here back to the gems, get this guy, which has a discount. But remember, discounts don't help up here. They only help in these three bottom ones. I'm going to go ahead and take this other orc. I'm going to take a gem. And what does that mean? I'm probably going to use that gem to turn one of those orcs into a gargoyle so that I can launch my next mission. Okay, so that was that. He says, moving right along. Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -ba -ba. All right, so, um, yeah. Although, wait a minute. What do I got here? I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, eleven. Perfect. I have eleven. 11 is the threshold, so yeah, let's go on ahead and do it. Let's go on ahead and finish what we started. Let's waylay the Bogatir. Spend that gem to turn this guy into a gargoyle and uh, complete my second of seven missions. I have a total of 11, so that means I get six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I get another upgrade. I'm regretting not having done it before. I, since I've got this guy, oh no, oh! Right. Oh, these guys. There's still these guys who would benefit from me um, reserving more stuff. Let's go on ahead. Let's see. This one means I can spend um, whatever the appropriate money would cost to recruit a card. Every time I reserve, I also get to do a recruit. It's like I did two worker placements at one. And I don't have to pay the little plus. I, I just have to pay the base value of anything if I unlock this one. If I unlock this one, spend two bucks and just grab a die from anywhere on the board. Uh, you don't have to waste time going and getting it. Yeah, you know, because maybe it's on a spot where you don't want to do that action. And so it makes reserving much more interesting. And having these guys makes reserving much more interesting. So a plan. A plan is coming into focus, I think. Let's go on ahead. Since I since I got the big uh, bump up on... Um, let's do this. So then I don't have to worry about the escalating costs. 
because I can always group people over here. And I will... All right, so we, where, where did the uh, Bogatir waylaying happen? It happened right here. Which means I get one point because one goblin went along. And I get two influence. One, two, I'm at the top. Until I can't get any more influence unless I do that upgrade. So I did that. Plus, every time I do a chain, I get some magic that will let me manipulate the dice. And um, yeah, nice. That worked out very nicely. Meanwhile, he's just chugging right along. He's blocked this. I cannot go, go get any more money. And I got to go someplace. And I want to come over here. No, if I come over here, he's going to come over there and he will score two points. So it's back to recruiting. These oracles and scouts haven't gone away yet. Let's get an oracle. That's going to cost... Oh, but I can't! There's no dice here. I want... Oh, no! Right, because remember, here's the thing. As soon as I do... Oh. Okay, no, 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 no. No, it's fine. It's at the beginning of my turn. If there's only three dice, then everything gets wiped. So... Right, yeah, this is the problem. So I could come over here, specifically to recruit something, probably the cheapest one, because it only costs one and I'm pretty broke. And because I am doing this, I could put this over here where it says I could recruit somebody. But I'd have to pay their money. Which means I'd have to pay one, two, three, four. I need four bucks to be able to come here, get that, and get this guy. And if I don't, he's going to disappear. He's going to disappear. I'm too slow. Because no matter what, wherever I go, I'm going to have to take a die. I have no choice. And then on the beginning of my next turn, before I could make it over here and recruit them, they're going to be gone. No. 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 All right. Well, what do I want to do then? Let's come over here. Um, so I'm going to either get this level four or this level two zombie or this level four gargoyle. And I mean, I do want to do gargoyles over there. And I can't believe this. There are no clashes. And oh, there and this cheap one needs two gargoyles. This is a really quick one. I could get done really quick. So yeah, let's go on ahead and take this level four gargoyle. And his two discount doesn't matter because the discounts don't matter along the top. Boom. So I've done that. And now I could mark one of these as complete. And what does it mean to mark them? Take an upgrade and put it on there so I become more powerful and I mark that I get these points at the end of the game. However, I have not gotten three clashes or done this particular layout or done six. So instead, I'm just coming over here to get two magic so I'll have more control over my dice and, not for nothing, more, oh, more control over the cards. And I'm going to use some of that. I don't want him to get another 15 points because there's another four sitting right there. I'm going to spend a magic and say bye bye Show me a two. It's a three. <gasps> and it's three goblins! Ah, oh, but it's too late. I've already done that. Oh, all right. I'm going to say go again. Bye-bye. And it's a two. That's what I wanted. I, you know. And again, you might do this because there are... I mean, if I... Did <gasps> this was a clash as well, but he would have taken it. So, you know, if I did this and a clash came out, I might uh, destroy the thing I just brought out because I don't want other players to get it because we're all racing for that. I didn't want him to get it because it was worth more points to him. So anyway, I am done. I got some magic. And then ironically, I spent it all. Um, I got a decently powered die. And more importantly, I kept him from what he wants. And then he gets here and says, What? A measly level two job? Fine. I'll take my nine points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that was that. He's done. It is my turn. At the beginning of my turn, if there are three dice... Remember, this is only solo. In a four-player game, there has to be four dice left. There's um, three dice. They're gone. All of these are gone. They're actually supposed to go, if I recall correctly, into the bottom of their deck. So there's a chance they'll come back. Bye 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 and actually, I was just tossing off to the side. I believe that's wrong. You're supposed to discard. You're, you're, not, you're not supposed to discard them out of the game. They're just supposed to go back to the bottom of the deck so that everything has a chance to come back. So, folks, that's why you watch with those Klingon subtitles turned on. Am I right? You already knew that. So, new champions. A thief. Oh, I like him. He just gives me six bucks. And he would only cost spend one buck to get six bucks? Yes, please. Although, again, he only works once, and then he is forever clogging up one of the spaces for your champions. What else? Um, get a point and a uh, immediately reserve a battle plan. Get some magic and a gem. And then meanwhile, over here, the assassin. Um, anytime you do an ambush, score two points. Or it's two points. No, no, that's not two points. Oh, 
Right, that means when doing uh, 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 you know, ambushes, you get plus two added to your total strength. And there's still nothing but ambushes over there. Um, every time you get a gem, get two bucks. Oh, I like that. I like that shaman. And, ooh, a miner. Which gives me a discount every time I reserve. So remember, I had to pay full price. Now, with that discount, I would get a $2... Oh, wow, that's awesome. And then we've got the big hitters. We've got uh, the Myrmidian. A point... Ooh, a point for every skeleton that uh, helped in attacks. I've already done two skeletons. So if I have this, I really want to focus on war plans that have skeletons in them. Uh, three points for every gem you've got at the end of the game if you've got a Witch Doctor on hand. And a point for every magic up to 12 at the end of the game. So those are all very powerful too. You get one of those, that really defines what you're all about. All right, so those came out. Oh, a new uh, mission came out. And it's a siege. It's not a clash, but hey, I would like to work on a siege. Because I want to do that. Mm, interesting. So I might want to... I mean, Although, here's the problem. I don't want to spend five bucks to reserve it, but if I don't get it quick, he's going to take it for himself. Unless I reserve one of these, in which case it'll slide down and he won't want it anymore. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, that was that. Oh, all right. We need new dice. Um, you know, and the, the more players, the more dice go into each depot. In a, in a solo game, there's just two. In a two-player game, there is four, and so on. Here's a way to get money. Uh, not a very strong knoll force, but four bucks made over there. Nice. And... All right, and now I'm free to go again. Except I can't go there because the adversary, not regular players, but the adversary blocks me. Um, oh, I do want that miner. I want this miner... So I start getting discounts when I reserve stuff. Yeah. Oh. But I don't want to waste time coming over here to reserve stuff. Oh, that's it. Yeah, because... <laughs> because if I come over here and reserve, then I spend the money to get the miner. So what came first? The uh, discount for actually reserving him or the reserving him himself? Ooh, so I just came over, come over here... And what am I planning on doing? I want to I want to bomb the Fort Araby. Although here's the thing, I can't do this even if I wanted. I can only hold 3 dice. I would have to get an upgrade to be able to hold 4 dice. Otherwise, this is an impossible mission. But it is a siege that is worth two more points to me plus magic. Urgh! Oh, those are interesting options indeed. What to do? I am not sure. But folks, I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the flow of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.